video, we'll talk about induced pluripotent stem cell. Induced pluripotent stem cell is a type of stem cell which is artificially derived from non-pluripotent somatic cell. And this was discovered by Shinya Yamanaka and his colleagues. So Shinya Yamanaka got the Nobel Prize in Medicine and Physiology in 2012. And this is for the discovery of the factors that can convert any cell type into a stem cell. So these factors or set of transcription factors, which are known as Yamanaka factors, has the capability to transform somatic cell into iPSCs. So these transcription factors are OCT4, SOX2, CMIC and KLF4. So the key features of iPSC is they are pluripotent. So they can give rise to three germ layers. They have the capability to form ectoderm, mesoderm or even endodermal derivatives. They are self-renewing, that, that means they can proliferate and has the capability to differentiate into specific lineages. Now, let us try to understand how researchers can make the iPSC in the lab. So, obviously, these kind of conversion of any cell into a stem cell requires reprogramming. And this reprogramming can be by integrative methods, or via non-integrative methods. In integrative methods, which were old school, retroviral or lentriviral vectors were used to uh, give these uh, transcription factors into cells. Now in non-integrative methods, sendivirus or episomal plasmids are used. So problem with integrating method is there is a risk of insertional mutagenesis in that case. In case of non-integral method, it is basically preferred because the chances of incorporating a mutation is less and it is preferred in clinical settings. So let us talk about the first experiment that happened. So there was some mouse fibroblast and there were viral transduction of these factors OCT4, OCT3 or OCT4, CMIC, SOX2 and KLF4. Now after the transfection process, after the transduction process, these transcription factors were misexpressed. They are not supposed to be present in the mouse fibroblast. They are artificially expressed in that cells. And eventually the cells get converted. And they converted into something called induced pluripotent stem cells. These stem cells has the capability to generate mesoderm lineage, for example, blood, muscle, etc. It can give rise to ectodermal lineage, for example, neuron, it can give rise to endodermal lineage, for example, pancreatic endocrine cells. So these iPSCs open the door for humongous clinical applications. But question is, how at a fundamental level, Yamanaka factor can do these transformation? These transformations are quite difficult, right, to imagine. So let us try to understand what really happens when Yamanaka factors are added. Inside the cell, the DNA is compacted in form of chromatin. There are many locus which are inaccessible for general transcription factor. And that is why in differentiated cell, other kind of lineage markers are not basically present. So basically the nucleosome is tightly wrapped around histone preventing the access to the nucleosome. But Yamanaka factors are very different. They are known as transcription factors, which are pioneer transcription factors. So they can access the chromatin even if the chromatin is condensed. They can latch onto the heterochromatinized regions and eventually open the chromatin region. That lead to transcription of many genes. For example, KLF4, OCT4 and SOX2 give rise to the transcription of nanog, ESRRB and endogenous SOX2 and nanog gene. So all these loci get opened. Now overall, there is an important process. So there has to be suppression of the somatic gene and there should be activation of the pluripotency gene network. So when a somatic cell is getting converted into a iPSC, at fundamental level, somatic identity is decreasing over time and the stem cell-like identity is gained over time. 
so obviously somatic gen gene regulation networks would basically be down regulated whereas the stem cell uh, gene modulatory network would be up regulated and that would be in action so question is how suppression of somatic identity happens or activation of pluripotency gene takes place it turns out factors like klf4 and simic prevents specific fibroblast specific genes such as col1 a1 thai1 etc simic on the other hand promote the metabolic or biosynthetic shift that means generally the cells prefer oxidative phosphorylation to generate atp but the metabolism now shifted towards glycolysis and simic actually upregulates enzymes and um, mo molecules that are required for orchestrating glycolysis making the cell very much like a stem cell in terms of metabolic needs now all these yamanaka factors can recruit epigenetic modifiers and many of these epigenetic modifiers are histone modifying enzyme for example it can recruit hat for adding h3k27 acetylation which would open up certain region of the chromatin it can also recruit hmts or histone methyl transferases it can give rise to h3k4 trimethylation which is activatory in nature then dna demethylases can also come into the play and can be recruited by these core transcription factors and this would remove methylation from pluripotency genes and make this circuit of pluripotent uh, genes active they also help to erase repressive marks so all this thing lead to a dynamic shift into the chromatin architecture in short the chromatin of that uh, somatic cell eventually becomes more like a stem cell chromatin and that lead to the production of genes and machineries that are important for maintaining pluripotency or a stem cell like state so it all boil down into the chromatin and how yamanaka factors can alter the chromatin architecture here are the quick discoveries that really changed the field of stem cells so first embryonic stem cell was actually discovered in 1998 from that time one of the big shift was 20 uh, 207 so in 2007 what happens is yamanaka and takahashi actually found out that you one can use these four factors to convert any cell into a stem cell though they got the nobel prize in 2012 this was a turning point by 2010 the first clinical trial of stem cell therapy took place by 2017 ipsc derived retinal cells were used to treat macular degeneration so these are the landmark discovery in clinical perspective but what are the clinical applications of ipscs let us devote some time on that so first ipscs can be made from any patients to understand the disease pathology ipscs can be used for gene therapy we just heard about the macular degeneration treatment ipscs can be used from the own from from the patient for uh, grafts for example there is a third degree burn there is a, a skin graft required patient's own cell can be converted into skin cell and can be used as a graft and lastly it can be used for precision medicine and it can be used for uh, screening drugs and testing efficacy of the drug and it kind of creates a tailored treatment strategy so macular degeneration is a situation where the central part of the retina which is known as macula is getting affected and it generally happens in the old population in 2017 the first ipsc derived retinal cells were actually transplanted into the patients with macular degeneration and this is led by masao takahashi a pioneering ophthalmologist and a clinical stem cell researcher she took skin biopsies from the amd patients converted them into ipscs using the yamanaka factor and eventually she grew rpe or retinal pigmented epithelium cells from these ipscs because ipscs has the capability to grow any part of the uh, these different three different lineages right 
and these RPEs were injected into the retina of one patient. And guess what? The patient was actually cured. There are other applications of stem cells and stem cell therapies. For example, a patient is facing a third degree burn, so a graft can be uh, added into that region. But many of the cases, graft is rejected. Recovery happens when their grafting is proper. So, in order to avoid the immune circumstances, one can literally take the skin cell from the patients and create iPSCs and make artificially a layer of monolayer of skin cells and artificial skin can be grown in the lab and ultimately it can be grafted. In that way, the own skin graft would not be rejected. Now there are other applications of stem cells. For example, studying the human brain. A developing human brain is very difficult to study. Scientists use monkey and mouse brain to understand what really goes wrong in human brain and how human brain develops. Human brain develop is challenging because uh, this is not possible to access the human embryo and manipulate the human embryo in the mother's womb. So scientists have discovered something called brain organoids and these can be made from the iPSC cells. So iPSC can be converted into brain-like structures known as organoids. And this has been used to uncover many diseases. In the lab, basically iPSCs would be, um, uh, uh, would be dissociated and uh, aggregate would be formed, known as embryoid bodies. These embryoid bodies can be uh, guided through morphogens to differentiate into specific lineages and an organoid would be formed. Using this strategy, scientists like Madeleine Lancaster found out what goes wrong in the patients with microcephaly. So skin cells from microcephaly patients and a typical individual was taken and it was found out that the brains or, or the brain organoids dif uh, developed differently in the patients with microcephaly. And this was one of the landmark discovery which used the IPSC technology to understand how brain development goes wrong in many diseases. So overall, we looked at the induced pluripotent stem cell and its application in medicine and biology. So I hope you like this video. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. See you in the next video.